All right, so forgive me, it's got kind of an awful day outside, so it's going to be a quick video. So this is just going to be a quick overview of Project Aurora and where I'm at right now with the different upper receivers. Um, so there's been some questions with this. This is compatible, just to work these out, with the new Nexus Pro Max. It works with the Katana Max. And of course, it is compatible with the Talon Max. So this is the... Uh, narrow pusher version. It can be loaded and unloaded with the pusher in the forward and closed position. Uh, There's a really requested update for it. So just a demonstration firing. All right. So that is the carbine upper receiver that we all know and love at this point. So we're going to go ahead and swap this over to the demolisher upper real quick. So separate it. Take that one off. And now we're going to go ahead and grab the demolisher upper receiver. Go ahead and install that onto the lower. Install the quick release pins. All right, so now it is demolisher rocket capable. So we're going to go ahead and pop that, firing. All right, so now we're going to swap from the demolisher rocket upper to the full auto electric upper, which I know everyone's been asking about. So we're going to go ahead and pop that off. Now the only change required to go to the electric upper versus the springer upper is we're going to go ahead and remove the follower and spring assembly from the bumper tube. Set those to the side for now. And we're going to take the full auto electric upper receiver and we're going to open this up. In here there is a storage slot inside the electronics tray for the power transfer bar. So we're going to go ahead and take that out, pop that back down and the power transfer bar sits exactly where the normal catch sits for the Springer versions. So with that installed on the lower receiver, we're going to take the upper and we're just going to come in, plonk it on there, and get the spins in. It's starting to get kind of wet, so forgive me. Put the quick release pins in here and we are good to go. Now if this was fully assembled with the rest of the electronics uh, it would be ready to fire at this point. So here potentially on camera we're getting positive switch engagement with the trigger via the power transfer bar up to the switch which is located inside the battery tray slash electronics access panel here. Um, I'm still printing the cage so I'll have this hopefully assembled later this week. Uh, the access door here, the feed door, is magnetically closed with uh, dual rare earth magnets. So positive lock, can't open itself up. Um, the dual stage flywheel is gonna go right here. It is solenoid, uh, solenoid powered is the flywheel of the world solenoid pusher. There's electronics pathway, 3D printed, fully into the blaster itself. And there's a electronics compartment up here for your additional driver boards and what have you that needs to go in there. So we'll take a closer look at the hyperdrive pusher. We're just going to go ahead and remove the quick release pins, push the full auto electric upper receiver off, pull the power transfer bar out. We can set that off to the side for now. We're going to go ahead and switch it back over to the springer upper receiver. So we'll take the follower, insert that into the spring, spring into the buffer tube, and then go ahead and put the springer upper back on and reinstall the quick release pins. I like to keep it on this side because I'm left-handed, so it keeps on the way. And there we are. Ready to go again back to the spring. So taking a quicker look at the full auto electric upper, we're going to bring it into the camera. This is the battery compartment right here for the battery tray. The flywheels are going to be up here. There is a storage slot for the power transfer bar here, and the switch is located here in the back. So we're going to go ahead and close that, flip it over. Here you can see the hyperdrive pusher and how that actuates. That'll push the rounds out of the magazine into the flywheels. And then we have the switch located back here at the back portion for activating the firing mechanism. So that's all I have for now. I'm going to go ahead and head back inside because it's, uh, it's quite wet outside, but thanks for watching.